Hello, good evening. This is Atif here from uh, STEP, Special Talent Exchange Program and South Asian Disability Forum. We are based in Pakistan. STEP is actually a cross-disability organization represented by persons with disabilities themselves. Uh, initially, we have been an advocacy organization for last more than 20 years and then we have also transformed into a development organization run by persons with disabilities. We are working on a twin track approach. On one hand, we are working directly with the people with disabilities to build their capacity on different development issues. On the other hand, we are working with decision makers and mainstream development organizations, governments and all other stakeholders who are not directly dealing with disability so that we can bridge this gap of inclusion. So people with, once people with disabilities are ready to talk about their rights, they can part of the development process. They can raise their voice on the rights space model instead of charity or for their rehabilitation. So that the starting point of inclusion is like starts uh, uh, voices of persons with disability. So we uh, today when we are talking about the disability inclusive Bosch, I would like to mention on this uh, uh, slide number two, you can uh, see that uh, disability inclusive Bosch or Bosch is a basic human rights and to reach most vulnerable communities over society to set a tone for inclusion in other communities based projects to increase access. Let me explain a little bit, like when people with disabilities don't have very basic need to be addressed, which is wash or sanitation, they can't become part of even their family activities. I have seen in Pakistan, like which is a bit of reality, we have seen in, uh, uh, some 10 years ago, that I heard we, uh, in a study we heard that a lot of people with disabilities are died because they don't, they don't uh, say their family or members, especially parents and siblings, to take them to the toilets because toilets are not accessible and they are severely disabled. So they are they feel shy to ask their families to take them to the toilet for the basic needs and to stop eating. So you can imagine, like, just because of this very basic need, their whole life stops here. So inclusive wash is a basic human right, part of the human right. And why it is important to include, uh, to have an inclusive wash or sanitation? Because as I mentioned, it is a, it starts from the very beginning of their life. And once they are have, like, they are included in their family, their family accept their disability, somehow they made toilets or ex accessible for them. But once they go out of their houses, Again, inclusive toilet, inclusive sanitation, inclusive water system is really critically important for them when they are going to the school. If the schools, whether they claim that their classrooms are fully accessible, their teachers are fully trained, but if the toilets are not accessible for them, they, are, they will remain excluded. They, can't, they will not be able to go to the school. Uh, again, a very, a very sad anecdote which I will share. Like one of the girls, she was highly qualified. She got accessible washroom in her house. She got accessible toilet in the school. And she graduated from the university. She got a job. And that was a prestigious and well paid job. But the toilet system was not accessible. And she refused to join because she was not able to cope with this uh, environment and the, the company was not willing to modify their toilet system and sanitation system. So, like inclusion in the society starts from the inclusive living or inclusive sanitation at home, at school, at workplace. Uh, and about the legal framework, like um, I would first share the uh, example or the case of Pakistan, like we don't have any legislation which forces any organization to have inclusive wash. Even we don't have legislation for the schools or any workplace or public places for having, but voluntarily a lot of buildings, a lot of new school buildings and workplaces, shopping malls, they are making inclusive sanitation system. But by law, we don't have any uh, any legal document which has jaws 
I would I would say uh, like law without jobs or nothing. So we don't have any legal bite biting law which forces organization to have a sanitation system. Pakistan has ratified UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2011. Uh, since then, like we are trying hard to implement this uh, to achieve uh, like implement UNCRPD to have achieve a legislation which in line with CRPD would protect the rights of persons with disabilities. And uh, as you know, that Article 28 of the CRPD clearly says that a reasonable accommodation is assistance or change to a position or a place that will enable a person with disability to use wash facility despite having a disability. Here I will a little bit more explain about the uh, reasonable accommodation which is like reasonable accommodation. You know that in developing countries most of the places are not accessible at all. But in some countries, they have a law when you will make a new building, it should be accessible in all terms, in terms of passengers, railing, rails, for the blind people, for accessibility for the deaf people with the signage and accessible sanitation. But if the building is old and you, before the law, and you can't make the whole universal design in this building, then there is a concept of reasonable accommodation. Like you change a little bit, you invite, like ask people to join, uh, like what uh, if a person is uh, coming to work in this organization, you will make a little bit amendments in your environment according to the need of that new team member. If, uh, one more example, like in one of the school in a village in Pakistan, we have made one ramp, only one ramp to the classroom and one ramp to the washroom toilet for the children, the, uh, two children with disabilities. But the whole school was not fully accessible, the playground and the cafeteria, but at least the places where these two, two children definitely have to go, we made them accessible for them so that they are not dropped off from the school. So reasonable accommodation is an ad hoc or temporary arrangement to accommodate one person in the building. Uh, we have some little recommendations for inclusive boys we have introduced uh, with the local adaptation of the material in Pakistan. We have worked in one of the northern district of Pakistan which was affected by uh, earthquake, affected by flood and sometimes it was affected by a, an internal war and millions of people were displaced from this area. So the biggest issue for the people in living in camps or living in a sheltered area was the inclusive toilets and latrines and washrooms. So we developed some basic guidelines for them and now um, like out of these guidelines I will just give you a little highlights which are very common and not very complicated that we can install some grab bars to hold when using latrine. For handrail, the middle point should be between 50 to 70. It again depends, the technical details depend on the size of the motion, but standard size are given in these uh, guidelines. Secondly, uh, what we have done, we have introduced a wood, wooden material according to the local, uh, uh, which was available in the local communities. So we introduced the local adaptation and uh, you can have a video which we can share later on after this webinar to all of the participants. You can have a look. It's a quick video of how we made the ramp with the local material in those areas. This is all about the inclusive wash in Pakistan and what we have done particularly after the disasters for personal disabilities and what we are doing for the legislation at the, at the national level. So if you have any question, I'm available and very happy to answer to continue the discussion. Thank you very much.